recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. He's got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed to tie the lead at 16. Gee, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When right, selfishly you want you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. Pips the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them. No McKinnis tonight. He was under the weather. And just our luck, McKinnis is one of the few people that actually knows a little bit something. Sean, Sean Higgs put so much effort in the Olympics. He thought water polo, like, you know, they were standing up. How deep was the pool? Um, on a more serious note, actually, how deep was the pool? There's been. We were talking about this last night, about how in the Olympic Village, 60% of the food has to be vegan and or plant-based or whatever. And they they were they ran out of meat and eggs and dairy products and athletes were complaining about their diets and about how they weren't being fed properly in the Olympic Village. And the swimmers were talking about, you're not going to see world records broken because of, um, you know, because of our diet and because of the pool as well. So all kidding aside, Higgs asked about how deep the pool is. The water polo, whatever, dude. Like, you're not standing, Sean. That's the whole point of why, it, you know. <laughs> but this is interesting for people that uh, are into the science of things about why there's going to be no uh, world records broken in the pool. It's too shallow. The The Olympic pools in the old days used to be two meters deep, okay? And I, I trust me, I, I just watched a fascinating interview about this. They used to be two meters deep. About 20 years ago, or so, they made it three meters deep, all right? Because the the two meters, it leads to more turbulence. The water bounces back up and it slows the swimmers down. So the deeper the water, the better. They So the standard world-class Olympic pool now is three meters deep. But freaking France, they didn't let, they didn't let them dig three meters deep. They wouldn't let them do it. They basically said you can. They, they, it'll ruin our arena, like they about the foundation. Like they basically told them you can go two point three meters deep. So you would think, well, whatever. If people are swimming at the top. What does it matter? The thing is that now that it's two point three meters deep, it's like fifty percent more mass of water that's bouncing back up and affecting the swimmers' turbulence. See, I'm on top of everything here. And before we bring in the AM uh, radio affiliates. Uh, we got some best of X stuff I want to get to. This is some great stuff. Uh, let's roll it. Let's do it. So uh, France played uh, Japan today, and they were 17 and a half point favorites. So look at this picture of Victor Wembanyama. 
This is a dude guarding Victor Wembanyama today. He doesn't even come up to his hips. <laughs> like, if, if you saw this picture, if, like, if, if we show you this picture before the game starts and we tell you the guys in blue there are 17.5-point favorites over the guys in white, I think you would say, you know what, lay the points. We'll lay the points, <laughs> right? It went to overtime. <laughs> it went to overtime, man. And, and Hachimura got kicked out of the game. Just my luck. I got Hachimura to be the leading scorer on Team Japan, and he gets kicked out of the game. It was one of those days today. So, um, yeah, look, look at that. Like, and, and, and it was actually a close game. We've got a Mick Jagger one here, too. This is a great one. Do, do you, got, you got my boy Mick uh, up ready? I think we can get this in before the, the affiliates. If not, we'll do it, uh, we'll do it after. Uh, it's uh, Mick Jagger. I just saw Mick Jagger. I saw the Rolling Stones live. Here, here's Mick Jagger at the Olympics. Look at this. No supermodels, no luxury suite. He's just sitting to a bunch of like people. They don't know who the hell he is at the beach volleyball. <laughs> They're just on their phones. <laughs> Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci. The pitch, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. Um, we're ready to rock and roll Olympic torch uh, style as the Olympics are set to continue. Our boy, Big Card Julio is going to step up and in because I know he's got a bunch of bets uh, for you. We've got a bunch of bets uh, for you, including USA and South Sudan. It's the rematch. It's almost like, um, you know, it's like Ali Fraser and Ali uh, 2. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, the heavyweight rematch. Who would have ever imagined that there would have been excitement about, whoa, we got to see like South Sudan and, and USA and how this plays out. So we know the USA smoked Serbia in their opener, but now they get a team that gave them all they can handle in the showcase um, two weeks ago. They were 43-and-a-half-point favorites against South Sudan in that showcase exhibition game, and they ended up winning by two. LeBron James saved them uh, late. They escaped. They win the basketball game, and now they're laying 29-and-a-half points. It was 31-and-a-half, but it's 29-and-a-half. So, listen, we know that the U.S., is going to be much more aware of uh, the South Sudanese right now, right, than they were the first time around. And also, let's be real. They were in Vegas. What the hell do you think they were doing in Vegas all night, right? You know what I mean? These guys were at the, you know, the Bellagio VIP room playing blackjack and, you know, whatever. And they're enjoying themselves. And they're thinking, whatever, we're playing South Sudan tomorrow. Who cares? So now they're going to be more focused. They're going to be more prepared. But it doesn't really mean I want to lay 29 and a half points. It opened at 31 and a half. It was actually bet down to to uh, to 29 and a half. Um, I'm gonna roll the dice here, guys, with South Sudan. I think the USA win this game by like 23, 22. I don't know, 18. Will it be close again? I don't think it'll be as close. But when we're getting this many points, got to pull the trigger. Uh, at least I feel we've got to pull the trigger here. With South Sudan getting the 29 and a half. I like the over 190 and a half right now. It's come down a little bit. Uh, we'll have more Olympic picks for you. But as far as the Olympics uh, are concerned, the three on three basketball has started. And it's really, really cool. You know, it's a it, three on three basketball hasn't really caught on in North America uh, yet. It's really big in Europe. The, the European countries are really good at it. And I remember I told everybody coming into this that the U.S. shouldn't be favored in this stuff. People just sort of assume that, you know, the U.S. and basketball, they're going to win everything. Yeah, but they don't specialize in three-on-three basketball. These European countries do. And case in point today, Jimmer Fredette and company lost to Serbia today on three-on-three basketball. Now, they're not, they're not eliminated. They have more games coming up, but not a great start. Uh, for the U.S. and the U.S. women's team lost as well. And if you recall, I talked a lot about liking Canada's women's team to win the three-on-three women's tournament. They started off with a win today. Speaking of women winning, uh, Simone Biles is the winningest gymnast ever in American history as uh, the U.S. wins the women's uh, men, uh, women's um, team uh, gold medal. The American men, of course, won the bronze uh, last night, so some uh, great stuff as far as gymnastics is concerned. And if you're hardcore like me, I bet over 39 and a half USA uh, gold medals. 
So I'm sitting here, I'm tracking them all. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what, you know, like you talk about you, you bet a future in baseball and we'll get people caught to date with the major league baseball trade deadline. But you know, like, you know, you, you bet a future. One of the cool things about betting futures is it keeps you involved throughout the season, right? You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I got the over on this team, and you're watching them and stuff. But the Olympics, it's really cool. I'm betting on, you know, I got money on France over gold medals. I got money on USA over gold medals. I got money on Canada over gold medals. And I got money on China over uh, gold medals. So I'm just sort of sitting here flicking around watching all the Olympic events at any time. That's all I look for. I'm like, man, anybody from the USA, France, Canada, or China competing here for, for a gold you know, competing here, and then I just pull for them after. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm not a communist, but I bet on China over 33 and a half. I figured, listen, if they're going to win the damn medals, I might as well win money on it. Uh, the USA a little bit slow with the gold medal so far, though. They're, you know, they're going to come, they're going to start. Uh, track and field is ready to start soon. And we've talked a lot about the 100 meters. I stand, and I still like my same picks uh, here. Um, I think Shakari Richardson, I think this is her time. The number continues to climb uh, right now. I think Noah Lyles is going to win the 200-meter men's, but I don't think he's going to win the 100-meter. I like the, the Jamaican kid, Thompson, uh, from Jamaica. Look at Japan at the top of the board with seven gold medals so far. Say what? Recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf, it happens. Uh, what's done is done and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's gonna be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. What a championship Sunday we just witnessed. Win, right? Selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing the trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. That's all. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci. We're talking about uh, the Olympics. We'll get back to the baseball and the uh, the trade deadline. As far as the Dodgers and the uh, the Friar game uh, right now, uh, Dodgers got off to an early uh, lead, and San Diego have come back, and it's now five five. What a wild baseball game! This is a high intense, uh, you know, ser- intensity series, obviously. San Diego went all in once again. Man, this team is unbelievable. A lot of people thought when their owner passed away that the the spending was over and that, you know, okay, that was just sort of a brief era where, 
of you know the the glory year and a half, the glory year, so to speak. But this team continues to be aggressive, almost too aggressive. As I saw Bob Nightingale recap of the amount of picks that they've given up as far as in their system is concerned. Like San Diego is definitely like these guys are really going all in, which you have to give them credit for. Especially like you know what I mean? Like they could say, "Wow, well, look, the Dodgers, the Dodgers are um the Dodgers are ahead of us. We you know, this isn't our time right now. Let's wait for this little Dodger era to end." But they kind of know the Dodger era is not going to end. The Dodgers are always going to be competitive. So I don't think San Diego get enough credit for being as aggressive as they are. But San Diego sent their number three, number four, number six, and number 29 ranked prospects to, to the Marlins. They have now traded 12 of their top 15 prospects in trades this year for Dylan Cease, Luis Arise, and now uh, Scott and uh, and Honing. That's That's like, wow. So... I'm not, and listen, I'm not going to call them out for it because I love the aggression because I, I'm, I'm one of the first people. Prospects are made to be traded. Like, that's the whole point of having prospects. A lot of people are like, oh, you can't trade the prospects. No, that's the whole point. You get the prospects as real estate to, to trade, to, you know, to, to win with. And, you know, you keep you know, your best prospects that you think can make the team. The Los Angeles Dodgers are a great example of this. Like, how many times, how many players can you look back on and see, yeah, and go, wow, man, I can't believe the Dodgers gave up on that guy. They traded him away. It's very rare, right? Like, and they're always trading prospects, right? But the Dodgers are good at fleecing other teams and, and knowing, yeah, listen, these guys aren't available and everybody else is. So you look at, you know, you look at what the Dodgers did with, with getting Kopich and they got Flaherty as well compared to what San Diego did. And, Listen, I'm giving credit to San Diego for being aggressive and trying to win, but at the same point in time, it seems to be a little bit excessive. Number three, number four, number six, and number 29, and now you've traded 12 of your top 15 prospects. Like, if you're trading 12 of your 15 top prospects, it better be like, yeah, listen, we're going to win the World Series because we're going to do this. I guess they feel that they've got a puncher's chance if they get into the playoffs. And you know what? I think they do if they get into the playoffs. I think they do. This would be a massive win for San Diego to come back against uh, against the Dodgers. Coming in six and a half back, it's starting to get real now. August is almost sort of like in baseball when the games start to count, like with teams for real. Even though, like, they, you know what I mean? Be- every game counts in baseball. And teams that start off slow often screw themselves, and at the end of the year, they'll, they'll be a game or two short. It'll be like, yeah, hey, you know what? Remember you guys screwing around in May saying, no, oh, don't worry about it? Right, remember that. Remember that losing streak when you went out. Know, it wasn't a big deal in June. Well, now it is a big deal, right? Like so, that's the whole thing. Like you know, the Yankees are a classic example of that. Like you know, like, dude, the Yankees were like five and twenty-one or something like that. I think they were five and twenty-one on a twenty-six game stretch. And look, it didn't really affect them that much because they won so many games early. The Los Angeles Dodgers lost a ton of games going into the All Star break. Didn't really matter because they won so many games already. So it really matters to build, you know, to, to, to win at any time of the year. But I've been around Major League Baseball teams and in clubhouses and stuff, and I've noticed, like, and I see it, especially with the younger teams, the pressure gets real suddenly. You know what I mean? Like, these games earlier in the regular season don't really mean much. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they mean something, but to the players, 162 games, it's a job. They're just going out there and plugging away and, and you know, trying to put numbers up. But when it gets to August, they start, they know the standings. I guess it's the best way of putting it. <laughs> the scoreboard watching begins, and they sort of know what teams, like, oh, this team and that team's ahead of us. And, right, it's sort of the pressure starts to get a little bit realer uh, right now. So speaking of pressure, France today, wow. And, and this leads into what's coming up here. Our boy Cam Stewart threw this out earlier about liking Puerto Rico plus the 17 and a half points against um, against Jokic and Serbia in basketball. And I can't disagree with it. We've seen, all right, th- this has been, a, you know, quite an underdog tournament uh, so far for the most part. The USA throttled Serbia. Canada did um, cover today against Australia. 
it was a pretty close game all game, but Canada ended up pulling away in the fourth quarter. R.J. Barrett's going off in this uh, tournament. So Canada's doing really well. Canada's 2-0 and as well right now. But as far as, like, the point spreads are concerned, Canada didn't cover their first game against Greece. They were seven half point favorites. They won by seven. Um... Today, Germany got all they can handle until they pulled away late uh, in their basketball game. Uh, France, though, were 17.5-point favorites today, and um, they went to overtime. Dude, Japan were up 84-80 with 10 seconds left, and France were mad. Like, they were like, when Yama, like, really, I never seen him look so distraught. Like, he really looked up. So he looked, like, partially mad and partially sad, like he was going to cry almost. Like, he was really rattled. He missed a three late in the game, and, like, the wheels fell off for France. Japan, like, you know, we're up by four, and it was like, oh, boy, this is, wow, France are going to lose for real. They hit a three with 10 seconds left, and the guy got fouled. Statzel, of all people, got fouled. He hit the free throw, four-point play. They went to overtime, and Wembenyama scored, like, eight straight points in overtime. And started blocking shots and like women Yama took over in overtime and they ended up escaping in overtime. So listen, I think I think both games we're gonna have close basketball games coming up here. I think Puerto Rico can hang around uh with Serbia. Serbia play kind of a slower tempo. It's only a 40 minute game. And something to be noted if you're laying 30 points with the US, it's a 40 minute game. Are they gonna smoke them that quickly? Recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf, it happens. Uh, what's done is done and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's gonna be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. MG, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When, right, selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend yeah. missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi. The pistol players, the hustlers, the people, the bus, and everybody else in between. So, I don't know about you guys, man, but these Olympics are, like, really screwing me up. I had a bunch of money. Today, I'll be honest, my first, today was the first day of the Olympics. I just couldn't get into the betting group. I've done really well betting on the Olympics. I got a lot of money on this stuff, too. But it threw me off. I should have just tried to, you know, I stayed up. I fell asleep. Like, I'm pulling a Kramer. Like, I slept, like, a couple of times for, like, 20 minutes and stuff. And I'm missing events. You know what I mean? 
like I'm getting ready for an event. I'm going to bet on. I fall asleep, and I'm like, oh, son of a. And then after I bet on something else, I'm sort of, I was a little all over the place today. And today, let's be real, the last two days, there's been a lot of gym uh, gymnastics going on, which I don't have a problem with, but the numbers are crazy, all right? Like, uh, it's like minus 2,500, everybody. So, but we got some cool events uh, coming up. Uh, just just for, for betting purposes, I'll throw this out there for the hardcores. For those of you looking for some action, uh, women's water polo, Canada and China, women's water polo, neither of which are world powers in uh, in water polo. It was like, um, it was a surprise that Canada even qualified and made it to the Olympics. Canada looked pretty good, actually, though, all things considering. They played against Hungary in their first game, and Hungary actually are a water polo power. Hungary, you know what I mean? They're like a, a like top five, top six team. The women's team is very good, the Hungarian team. And they were laying five and a half. At one point, it was nine seven. The Canadian women were hanging around with them. And, you know, just as a better, I like watching these sports and stuff. And I sort of caught on. Like you saw, we talked about this last night. And I said in the, in the rugby sevens, how the underdogs are just like a good play because the game is only 14 minutes. It's so quick. So... If you have the underdog and, and the team scores, like, you're going to cover the spread. And for the record today, the USA, the, the, the USA covered the spread, right? And um, the USA ended up winning the bronze medal. Like, that, the dude, that, the woman's rugby was like an underdog cash cow. It was crazy. But I'm noticing the Olympics, and we were talking about this with the basketball the the odds makers have a tough time, right? Like you know, these are different events and stuff, or these teams don't play each other, so they're they're going to err on the side of caution, and they're going to add more points, or the line is going to be higher than it actually should be, I think, right? Like they look, oh, like Serbia has Jokic, okay, he's one guy, and they got Bogdanovic, okay, they, they so you got two really good guys. Well, you think that Puerto Rico can't play? Right, like I think people underestimate these other countries a bit, like Japan today even. Like we showed the picture a couple of minutes ago. For those of you on the AM radio audience, you can always watch us on Twitter now, uh, Twitter X at Sports Grid TV. Got a live video uh, stream going. No, we got a chat, but people have a hard time figuring it out. <laughs> but, um, well, we've got like our best stuff. Like, dude, the, the, there was a dude on Japan. He didn't come up to Victor Webanyama's waist, like literally and figuratively. But they competed. The game ended up, look at this, the game ended up going to overtime. Um, the, you know, um, Spain beat Greece today. There was another underdog that won. The basketball, the underdogs have covered quite a few spreads so far. And you got, there's only two games. Fortunately, these games are more respectable times. It sucks being on the West Coast for, for the, the Olympics and the Euro Cup and stuff. It's great being on the West Coast for, for football. It, it, to me, like, I love it. Like, the 10 a.m. NFL starts and, like, the college football starting. College football game days on at, like, 6 a.m. and stuff, right? Like, the football stuff is really cool. Baseball, the daily NBA grind and the baseball grind is cool on the West Coast. You know, the games start at 4 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock. But the Olympics, man, have been brutal and have really screwed me up. And I actually don't like missing the events. Uh, so, I, you know, I stay up. I figure out every four years, but... The first four, four days, I went too hard, and it did rattle me. Like, I was making mistakes in my bets and stuff. I was, like, you know, I was forgetting things. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, I got to sleep a bit here. This is Olympics. So if I'm going to win money, I got to be sharp. But these these basketball games are at much more respectable times tomorrow, guys. 11.15 Eastern time, Puerto Rico, Serbia in the morning, and the USA-South Sudan game is a uh, perfect time for everybody. It's 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific. USA now laying 29 and a half points over under 190 and a half. I'm going with South Sudan plus the points. I think that, you know, it wouldn't shock me actually if South Sudan played with them again, actually. Like I'm almost buying into this magic a little bit, but the U.S. are going to be aware this time. The thing is, it's a lot of points, man. It's it's only a 40 minute game. So I was thinking about a 40 minute game. You got to win by 30. You've got to dominate this game. Like, if South Sudan go on one run, we cover.
recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. What a championship Sunday we just witnessed. Win, right? Selfishly, you, want, you always want to get, get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. This is Sports Rage. I'm Rancy. We're waiting on our boy, Big Card Julio. He's probably putting some bets in uh, right now. San Diego just came back and beat the Los Angeles Dodgers. What a massive big-time win uh, for them. Talking about a team that's peaking at the right time. Dodgers were up uh, 5-1 in this baseball game. And uh, Merrill hit a home run in the ninth. Machado hit a home run in the ninth. Then they win in the bottom of the, the tenth. Uh, just a dramatic victory, uh, packed Petco Park Stadium. And thing is, too, like just beating the Dodgers even bigger. And this goes back to, remember we talked about this after the Dylan C. Snow hitter, about the enthusiasm of the baseball team and the environment that it creates. Like these teams don't think about that when they pull their pitchers, when they're on the verge for a no hitter. It's like, you know, especially if you're a contending, you're, you're on the verge of contending type of team. And it's like, listen, you pitch a no-hitter, it really gets the clubhouse going, man. And it really fires up the other pitchers now because they don't want to let down, like, they, next next man up type of deal. And you look back, like, the momentum that San Diego has started to build, that no-hitter was a big part of it. And it's just another big-time win. And it's such a long season, the baseball season. It's about peaking at the right time. The San Diego baseball team – is peaking at the right time right now. As far as playing their best baseball, you get healthy, play your best baseball, and give yourself a puncher's chance. And you look at the you look at the National League picture. The Dodgers are a juggernaut. You, you know, it is you know, no one can dispute that. But San Diego beat the Dodgers in the playoffs. I'm a Dodger fan. I'm aware of it. San Diego beat the Dodgers in the playoffs. So San Diego's not scared of the Dodgers. They just beat them tonight, right? They're not scared of the Dodgers. And you look at the other teams in the National League, like I talked about, like Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia peaked too soon all the time. They did this last year. I think the Braves are a team still that are kind of dangerous that I wouldn't write off because they haven't, they've had a lot of adversity. They haven't really had a run yet. I think they could have that in them. But I tell you what, man, San Diego flying under the radar and as dangerous as anybody in the National League is right now. Like if, if we said, all right, the playoffs start this weekend, San Diego's as dangerous as anybody is. They have as much of a chance of winning as L.A., Philadelphia, Atlanta, or any of these other teams do. I believe our main man, Big Card Julio, is ready to step up. And how you doing tonight, Julio? Boy, Gabe, I tell you what, 
this time of year, this is when we start getting into baseball. I know there's so much sports going on in the Olympics and the TBT and CFL and college football bets lining up. But after the deadline, this is when we start to really get interested with baseball. And look, look what happens when you leave a poor baseball team. Things start, things, things, the sun is ever so brighter. Jazz Chisholm with the Yankees. Tommy Pham with the Cardinals. Things are brighter when you leave poor baseball teams. So I love this time of year. And this is when real baseball starts to begin. And you know what? It was a big time series, man. L.A. and San Diego, obviously rivals. And the Dodgers playing good baseball right now, despite all of their injuries. They put up a three spot in the first. They're cruising or up 5-1. Like I said, these are just sort of season defining wins. That no hitter I talked about. Getting the clubhouse fired up. Getting, you know, the, the fan base back in it. And wins like this against teams like the Dodgers also go a long way, Julio. Like I said, you know, as far as the betting futures are concerned, San Diego, I, I mean it. They could play with anybody in the playoffs, Julio. They, 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 dude, and they're getting, you know, they, they get Musgrove back. They, they, can, they can compete with anybody in a, in, a, in a series. The Dodgers, the Phillies, the Braves, like San Diego are back right now, baby. And they're eleven to one on the overnight markets right now, Gabe. As uh, the the late night games start to close, the futures get reposted. Eleven to one to win the National League is very tantalizing. As you were talking about the Phillies, whether or not they peak, does Atlanta have enough pitching to get them over the hump in the postseason? Milwaukee, even though they've been playing great, they they always have issues. So if we're just playing numbers, eleven to one to win the National League is very interesting. I was also looking at Kansas City. I'm a prisoner of the moment, maybe. This is a team with a high walk weight. It's a tough team to strike out. And bat, at-bats are more pressures in September and October. 20-1 to 1 for Kansas City to win the American League. You know what? I also don't have a problem with that, Julio, just because you've seen it before, dude. Baseball, the, the if is there a sport, seriously, is there a sport where – the regular season means less, like, as far as going into the playoffs is baseball, Julio. There is. Yeah. And I would say the only other one is the NHL. Uh, the NHL is hockey. As we see all the time, like, the President's Cup trophy winner never wins. You know what I mean? The team that's the best record. Right. And, and same thing in baseball, guys. Baseball is very similar. The team with the best record does not have a good track record of winning the World Series in baseball. Like, you play 162 games, all right, good for you. You win You win your division. Oh, we had a great year. You won 112 games. Whatever, dude. You're playing in a five-game series suddenly. Yep. Against and, and and you're, you're also playing against a team, Julio, that's already played the little wild-card series that's hot. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, like, exactly. you've been off for a couple of days. This other – and baseball is an everyday sport. So, suddenly, you haven't played for five days. This team that's been trying to get into the playoffs, been playing playoff-type baseball for the last month – comes in smoking hot, takes game one on your home field, Julio, of, of the series. Yep. Next thing you know, you lose game two and you're screwed. You're out of the playoffs. <laughs> exactly. And bo both of these teams are in wild card positions. Uh, Minnesota, Kansas City, there's no passing the, 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 uh, the Guardians. So they're going to be in the wild card spot going into the postseason, barring any catastrophe. I just love both of these numbers, Gabe. You you turned me on to San Diego, and I really love this Kansas City number. So let's ride the, the, the Friars and the Royals in the playoffs. Yeah, well, I just lost uh, uh, the money betting against San Diego with the Dodgers. I was feeling pretty good about it, Julio. So that's how it's I work. Here. I'm like, all right, they beat me tonight. I'm going to get my money back. I'll bet a future on them now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, all right, I'm sold. I'm sold now. <laughs> you know, like, I've got hit in the head over the hammer. No, I've been talking to you. It's true. I've been talking about San Diego for a couple of weeks, actually, about, like, just sort of noticing these little turning points. And I talked about it earlier on the program about baseball teams and, like, success and betting and stuff. But baseball clubhouses, the atmosphere in the clubhouse really, 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 really matters. It does. And I'm not talking about everyone having to be buddies and stuff, right? Because, like, anyone that's been in clubhouses, you'd actually be surprised how little players talk to each other. But... It's more I'm talking about the atmosphere, right? Like, you know, basically, like, if you hear, like, Julio, like, if a team is fighting over the music, you know their clubhouse isn't very harmonious. You know what I'm saying? 
Like you know, they're sort of, yeah. Like there's a lot of like, and we we're talking like the White Sox clubhouse. You know, it's a hellhole. You know, everybody would, you know, what I mean, just what's going on with our franchise. It's not a fun place to go. It's not a good work environment. But you All can right. just sort of see San Diego's got this sort of. You can tell it's a positive thing, and like I said, I can't stress it enough about that no hitter and the atmosphere that it created uh, for that team. There's no more success, bigger success than a no hitter. So it shows the team, look, this is what we can do. This is how good this pitcher is. The next pitchers want to match it. Uh, it, it just it, you know, it just gets everybody going, man. And a win like this tonight's going to get everybody going. Great number, eleven to one, to win uh, the National League. But speaking of great numbers, Julio, I'm really upset that it's over. The women's rugby sevens was an underdog cash cow, bro. The USA won today as a plus eight hundred underdog, and so did Canada today. To, uh, you know, Canada won to get to the finals a plus nine hundred underdog. Julio kept, and the USA did it and ended up winning the bronze medal today. It's great for the homers, right? If uh, even if even if you didn't like the sport, you're betting a little USA to win any event. So uh, it's fantastic, Gabe. Great tournament to watch. My wife even wanted to watch women's rugby. So that, that that's growing the sport. If you can meddle in one of these odd quote odd sports, it, it, it helps tremendously. So hopefully, rugby starts to see some uh, some uh, rewards in the next few years in terms of more more eyes attracted to the sport. Well, rugby sevens is kind of a hipster sport that is very popular with younger people. And, you know, it's a big sport in Europe, obviously, and in South America. But the rugby seven stuff, I think this is a sport that's really about to, to break out, to be honest. Recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just get this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. MG, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When, right, selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing the trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. Shout out to everyone uh, joining us in SoCal, San Diego. Big win uh, tonight over the Los Angeles Dodgers. They hated Dodgers. And me and Julio were just talking about how San Diego 11-1 to win the uh, the National League. Very good odds. They can play with anybody. But, you know, they're, they're five and a half back. I was talking about this earlier. About this series actually means something. And when the Dodgers were leading, I said, wow, you know, statement win for the Dodgers, basically. 
kind of putting the fire out and, you know, San Diego with this series and, you know, extending the lead instead of letting San Diego shorten the lead. Uh, but uh, big time win tonight. But let's get to the Olympics. And uh, Julio, looking at the official medal count right now, Japan surprising everybody. Seven gold medals uh, for Japan, the most so far. China has six uh, gold medals so far. Australia is owning the pool. They've done very well in the water, Australia. They've got six gold medals. France, France, the host nation, uh, pretty good start for France. They had a big disappointment that they lost their women's rugby. They were supposed to win gold there, but France has been very good in the in the fencing. There was a there was a final where they were both from France. They're up to five, and France is really good at track and field as well. I've got over twenty six and a half gold medals for France. I got over thirty three and a half for China. I got over five and a half for Canada, who have two, and I've got over 33, 39 and a half. Excuse me, thirty nine and a half for the USA and Julio. A little bit slow. I'd say a little bit of a slower start, Julio, for the U.S. as far as gold medals are concerned, bro, with four right now. And you'd expect Team USA to dominate in the pool, on the, on the track. That's how they accumulate these large gold medal. They don't counts, dominate right? the pool anymore. Australia I does know. now. I know. Australia yeah, is just... the king of the pool. That's just it's not, it is what it is. They are and. And in the women's side, Julio, Canada have come up and sort of surpassed the USA on the women's side of being like the number one contender to uh, to Australia. As you saw Summer McIntosh fin- had, finished ahead of Ledecky even the other night. And sometimes in terms of world sport, it's good for the U.S. to get a little reminder that yeah, you have to dominate year-round in these sports. So maybe some reinvestment in these sports can help in the years to come, especially – when we get to 28 in the L.A. games. No, good, great call, Julio. Like 2028, the U.S. Olympic Committee is going to be all in. Same thing, like remember growing, at least me growing up uh, in the 70s into the 80s, like it was kind of the U.S. was dominant, man, in, in gymnastics. You know what I'm saying? And right. now it's like, wow, the U.S. men win their first medal since 2008. It's like, wow. Like, really? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, the, the, you know, the world, the world, the world has changed. But... The U.S. will start racking up some gold. The U.S. is going to do really well at track and field. Uh, they'll start racking them up. But I'm a little bit concerned. They, you know what I mean? They, I think it's going to be close to the number. But without being stated, Julio, as far as parlays are concerned, let me start throwing out some some bets. I want to hear what you got for us. But I'm looking here right now. Most uh, most gold medals. USA's minus 400 right now. China's plus 275. France is... Um, is 100 to 1. It's like, so it's basically USA and China. USA mm-hmm. will finish with it more than China when it's all said and done. You know what I mean? And, and you know what the differences will be, Julio? Like the U.S. basketball team, men's and women's, there's an extra couple of goal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. U.S. women's soccer. Like, there's just going to be enough. The, the numbers come down, bro. Like, this is like minus 1,200, Julio, before the Olympics started. That's why I'm looking now. I'm like, wow. I think it's a little bit of an overreaction. We're only a couple of days into this thing. And China only has a certain amount of events that they're going to dominate. It's sort of like Japan. Japan have kind of topped out here. Right. I'm still waiting for the U.S. And a good thing about this bet is minus 400. You can put it in parlays, Julio. USA most gold medals. I think they'll still win this. No, I like that as well. And you can start stacking them with uh, maybe your season win totals in college or pro football to move it up to plus value. And again, it's going, if you're looking at these bets, start looking at the other countries. What other sports do they have the rest of the Olympics? Because like you just said, the U.S. should dominate on the track. Basketball, they should pick up some gold medals as well. Maybe even women's uh, three-on-three basketball. Who knows? But I I like that play game. Very good play. Well, if you recall, I talked a lot and I warned everybody about the – about the U.S. women's three-on-three team, I said they shouldn't be favored. I said Canada's going to win. Yeah, Canada. And yeah, so far so Canada, good. Yeah, they won their game today, and the U.S. lost their game today. I know it's only one game, but there's not a lot of room for error in this round robin. Uh, USA men also lost today, and I thought the U.S. men were overrated uh, as well, but I did bet on them today. That game was a lot of fun. They were in it, but uh, one of the Barry brothers is on USA, and – he committed a uh, a technical foul, 
And anyone, <laughs> dude, it's it's up to 21, Julio. So, like, they're basically trading buckets, and right. he smoked the guy in the face. And it was two free throws and possession. So they hit their two free throws, and they hit a three-point shot. But the three-point shot and three on free is two points. But so it was a four-point swing. Like, the game went from 14-12 to 18-12. Like, the game was over after that. Like, there's no room for error in this stuff. Like, you can't be stupid. And the U.S. got, you know, they were kind of stupid, and they lost the game because of it. But I'm just telling you guys right now, moving forward, the U.S.A. are not winning. I don't think they're going to win the either the three-on-three, three, the the woman or the men. I didn't think they were going to win the woman and watching. Bro, like, they just threw a, they just threw a team together. Like, Jimmer Fredette's yep. bouncing around, playing in all these tournaments and stuff. Like, these U- European teams play together all the time. Like they take three on three seriously. So what I would have just a heads up done, for people Gabe, fade the USA teams moving forward on three on three. And and again, going into twenty eight, like you have to be more serious with three on three men's and women. Put 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 together guys. Give them the money. Do something. Incentive. I'm thinking the do same thing, Julio. Incentive. I'm like, you know what? If you want to, you want to win. How come there's not NBA players on a three on three? Like who are buddies? Exactly. Or you're like three guys, guys that are on the same the same NBA team. They're the three buddies. You know what I mean? Say, man, let's play together, man, in this, and let's do this. Like, you know, why not? You know, like, if you want to win, I'm just I'm just stating, like, send, sending these I people. Agree. Like, same thing, like Haley Van Lith. I like Haley Van Lith. She's a good college basketball player, Julio. She's not even in the WNBA yet, bro, and she's playing against grown women in Europe for a gold medal. She, they're not going to win. <laughs> Exactly. Like they're not gonna win. Exactly. Like she's a teenager. Like she's a kid against grown women. Like it won't. It won't work. Um, what do you think, Julio? To basketball, we're riding both underdogs. I'm taking Puerto Rico plus the 17 and a half, and South Sudan plus 29 and a half. Julio picks on the other side. Recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf, it happens. Uh, what's done is done and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's gonna be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. He's got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. MG, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When right, selfishly, you want you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend yeah. missing a putt for for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing the trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. This is Sports Rage. I'm Red. I just want to throw this pick out here. I gave you, I've already talked about this, but it's gone. The event lasts a little while, and it's the woman's archery, except we're getting into the final stages of this thing right now. And um, remember I bet on uh, Xiong Lim, uh, Xiong Lim, and she's a 21-year-old Korean uh, archery. Uh, this, I guess she's like a phenom of all phenoms. 
Like she thought the Korean trials are known as like the ultimate gauntlet of, of, of like getting here. And she won like four of the five different like uh, events in it, which is, I don't know. I think only three people in women's history have ever done that in Korea. Like she really is like next level, crazy good. And she already led the South Korea team, women's team, to the women's event, but now the individual events. So it continues. And Julio, yeah, she was. I got her a plus 200 on an odds boost, okay? She was like plus 187. I got plus 200. And then somebody told me, oh, man, I got her a plus 230 without a boost and stuff. And I said, jump on it. It's free steal. It's your steal and jump on it. They keep on bumping. They keep on posting these odds boosts, uh, Julio, a bet 365 for her. If you look, and they don't like they don't move it. They they keep changing the odds, but they keep leaving her up. So I keep taking the same odds boost over and over and over. <laughs> so I got the odds boost of plus two hundred. I got the odds boost of minus one twenty. I got the odds boost at minus one sixty three, and it's still up right now, guys. And um, she is currently she's up to minus one seventy five right now to win outright, Julio. Minus 163 on the odds boost, down from 175. The closest contender, bro, is 10 to 1 after. All right. Oh, wow. And then, and then the second one after is 22 to 1. So 175 is not a bad bet, Julio. So I was just saying, let's go uh, Xiong Lim to win women's archery, along with uh, USA to win most gold medals, minus 400. Um, oh, of course, they won't let me parlay this. I was going to be all cute. <laughs> They know it's going to win. I'm like, no, they won't let me parlay that. They'll let me parlay everything. They won't let me parlay that. Okay, so the basketball, um, I'm going, here's a prop for everybody, guys. Devin Booker over one and a half three-point shots made. Uh, Devin Booker gets a lot of playing time. He takes a lot of threes, and he's a pretty good, like, international player. Booker's a badass, actually, in these games. So um, let's go Devin Booker, and Kerr likes him and plays him. So. Let's go over one and a half three point shots made for Devin Booker tonight. But give me South Sudan plus 29 and a half points. Let's go over the 190 points that it is right now. And I'm going to take uh, Puerto Rico plus 17 and a half against, um, against Serbia and men's basketball, Julio. And I've also got a water polo pick up for you. Uh, Canada play China this morning, neither of which are, are sort of water polo powers by any stretch in women's water polo. But Canada have beaten them four straight times and rather easily. This in the water polo world, this is sort of the game that people think Canada are going to win. It's actually a dead dead pick 'em. So uh, Canada beats China water polo. What do you got for us, Julio, on the way out here at anything else Olympics? I like that, especially as Canada blew a uh, second half lead against the uh, Lady Dutch in the pool. Team USA first quarter over twenty eight and a half points. I like Greece who has an outside chance to make it into the knockout stages in men's basketball. Greece on the money line, plus 185 against Australia. Women's soccer, Team USA against Australia. Team USA to win. Both teams to score no in the first half and underfold four goals, plus 160. And then lastly, Gabe, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The White Sox have lost 16 in a row. Give me Kansas City on the run line and Kansas City First five money line plus one thirty against the White Sox with Singer on the mound tomorrow afternoon. It really is unbelievable how the White Sox blow these late leads over and over and over again. Um, a great stuff, Julio. As always, may the winners be yours. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. As always, I appreciate it. Good luck, everybody. Thanks, Gabe. There's a uh, big card, Julio, with us. Olympic events coming up, uh, starting. They keep on having to delay the triathlon because the river is too dirty. So they say they're going at it tonight here. Supposedly it's going to be clean enough. They're, they put something in it, some treatment or whatever. The athletes don't even care and just want to do it. But the triathlon's coming up, badminton. Men's volleyball. Keep your eye on this one. Poland and Brazil. I think Poland are going to win the gold medal, actually, in, uh, in men's uh, volleyball. Um, but as far as the basketball is concerned, like we said, I'm going to take South Sudan plus the 29 and a half over 190 and a half. Devin Booker over one and a half, three point shots made. And Puerto Rico plus 17 and a half. Men's basketball. Follow me on Twitter at Sports Bridge. I got a ton more picks other night. You're on your own. Later.